We're continuing on with our series called Decoding Communication. And in this series, we've been dealing with decoding one of the greatest mysteries in the world, and that is the communication between a man and a woman and between a husband and wife in the marriage relationship. Now, session one was boys and girls, men and women, there are differences. And that, if you missed that session, that's an excellent session to watch because it sets the groundwork for this whole series. Session two was the secret that decodes the communication problem between men and women. Session three, we talked about understanding the mind of a man. Now, ladies, if you didn't see that, you need to watch it because now we're going to move into a continuation of understanding the mind of a man. We're going to go into parts one and two of speaking the language of respect. This is part one. Now, in Ephesians chapter 5, there's this wonderful verse in there. It's going to be our launching point here. It says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. In other words, it's talking about that you husbands need and are commanded by God to love your wives because love doesn't come naturally from men. Men speak the language of respect. And so God recognizes that because he created us. And he says, men, you need to love your wives even as yourself. And then it goes on and says, see the wife that she reverence her husband. In other words, that she respect her husband because the the language of a man is respect and a woman doesn't naturally have respect as part of her hardwiring. You know, she is hardwired to love. And so God recognizes this and he helps us decode from the scriptures about how we can have a more fulfilling relationship in our marriage. And then there's shown in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, a very interesting Bible verse. And it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. What this is basically saying, ladies, is Peter's giving us a key that can unlock the heart of a man, saying that even though your husband is undeserved, even though your husband is non-believer, without a word, by you showing respect and reverence towards him, that you can win his heart, you can unlock the key to his heart, and help him to be a more fulfilling husband, and even lead him to the Lord. Now, some people in the more radical feminist agenda would say this is a chauvinistic statement that's found in the scriptures. And you know, there's actually an effort being made to feminize the Bible. There is a group that is going through and they're taking out all the things in the Bible that refer to God as a male and taking out verses that somehow make women seem like they are um, lower than a man. But as I pointed out in one of our earlier sessions, the Bible is very, very fair in sharing that there's an equality between a husband and wife and that the two come together and become married and the two become one flesh and that in a married relationship, actually, the two can reflect the character of God more completely than one individual, male or female, by themselves. You know, here's a powerful truth, ladies, on how you can win a man. And I just want to share with you that in doing the research for these presentations, I got permissions from Jeff and Shante Fieldahan, who have written two books. Uh, One of the books is called For Men Only, and the other book is called For Women Only. And what I liked about these two books is the method that they went about writing these books. What they did was basically they hired a national survey company. This is a a huge, well-known survey company that's hired by big companies to do surveys and uh, in marketing strategies they hired this company and basically Shante did it first when she wrote the book for women only and she asked a group of 300 men through the survey uh, over 300 men of different ages and different social status various questions about what men think and you know basically different questions on how they they interface with their wife the way they feel about situations and started putting the stats together Jeff eventually did the same thing with women and they were both shocked as in these surveys people started opening up their hearts and sharing with them about what was going on in their minds and the neat thing about this is it's not pop psychology what it is is that if you have 75 percent of women saying this is the way I feel about this situation you have a pretty good understanding that the majority or at least three out of four women think a certain way about a situation there's always exceptions to the rules and so I'm going to be using some of their materials as I go through this presentation you know the results about how men feel about their wife respecting them. You know, this is a big issue. I was sharing that with a man. Uh, The big issue is that oftentimes men do not feel respected 
by their wives. And that women have a weakness. You know, they, their language is a language of love. And sometimes their backsided weakness is that they don't know how to express respect. Just like a man is, is into the respect mode, but he has a hard time expressing his, his feelings of love. So I just want to share with you these statistics. You know, here is a question that was asked in the survey. It says, in the middle of a conflict with my wife, I am more likely to feel, and they were given the choice of one or two different questions to answer. And one was, is that my wife does not love me right now. And the other one is, my wife does not respect me right now. Now notice the stats here, it's, it's amazing. 19% of the men, good-willed men who love their wife, that have a good relationship with them, that are in the middle of a controversy or some kind of conflict in the home, 19% of those men said, my wife does not love me right now. But 81% of those men said, my wife does not respect me right now. Now, when this research was being done, Shante thought, what's the difference? I mean, love and respect, aren't they the same thing? And then she started to realize, in the mind of a man, they aren't the same thing. You see, a man, you know, is thinking that my wife can love me, but um, I'm not really sure if she likes me or that she respects me. And when you have 81% of the men saying that they feel like in the middle of a controversy, they're not respected, that says something, ladies, about how a man thinks. Now, whether it's right or whether it's wrong or whether he's right or whether he's wrong, doesn't matter. This is the reality of what men are thinking in their minds. And that is a helpful bit of information for you ladies. Here's the other question that was asked, and this one just completely shocked me and shocked those who were involved with the survey. Asking men, now over 300 men, this one question, if forced to choose between feeling alone and unloved or inadequate and disrespected, which would you choose? Now think about it, you have this choice. Do you have the choice of being unloved and being alone or inadequate and disrespected? Listen, 74% of the men said they would rather be alone and unloved and 26 of the men said they would rather be looked upon inadequate and disrespected. Does this say something to you? This tells us that three out of four men would rather be alone and unloved than to feel inadequate and disrespected. So it's screaming to you ladies, you know, men want to be recognized as being adequate. Men want to be re recognized as being respected. That is a huge issue for them. Now, I just want to challenge you gals to something. And as I shared this with several different ladies, they, they uh, kind of raised their eyebrows a little bit. But here, I want you to think about this. Do the respect test. Put what I'm saying to the test, OK? Do this respect test. Um, Try showing respect to your husband by simply telling him. Now sit down and pray about it and think of at least three things that you respect about your husband. You know, think about how I, I really respect my husband because he's a good provider for the family. I really respect my husband because he's patient when sometimes I'm having an emotional crisis. I really respect my husband because, you know, he's a good father of the kids. Whatever it may be, think about it. And then sometime, catch your husband off guard and just simply go to him and say, you know, honey, I just want to let you know something. I really respect you because and just watch his reaction. And you know, I had one lady tell me, oh, this is manipulation. You know, you want me to go around and try to manipulate my husband so his performance will change? No, 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 this is not about manipulation. You know what this is about? This is about doing God's will. God is telling you in Ephesians chapter five and in 1 Peter to respect your husband. So one of the ways that you can respect your husband is just to tell him you respect him and just watch his eyes light up. And at first, you know, um, he, he might just be shocked. You know, like, well, what do you want? Or do you want a new wash machine? Or you're looking for a new car or what? You know, you, he might try to blow it off by being sarcastic a little bit, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But it's a matter of doing God's will. For instance, if a man read in the Bible about how he should love his wife even as himself, and he recognizes he hasn't been showing the affection that he should be showing, is he manipulating you by doing God's will and stepping forward and just trying to show you more love because God's told him that's what he should do? No, you would open your arms and rejoice the fact that your husband is starting to show more affection and love in a relationship with you. So this is not about manipulation. This is about doing God's will. Now, I just want to warn you gals, 
men have a tendency to be a little sarcastic. You know, men will blow things off by joking. You know, I've been to men retreats, I've been camping with guys, and guys joke with each other in a way that they shouldn't really joke with ladies. I, I, one of my best friends is an ER physician here in the community, and I just had a birthday, for instance, and he called me on the phone. He said, hey, Jeff, you're sure getting to be an old geezer. Have to get you a wheelchair pretty soon. And you know, between two guys, that was his way of saying, you know, you're my buddy, you're my friend. And I came back at him and said, yeah, why don't we get some together, you know? We could go wheelchair racing together and stuff. And we were just teasing each other. You know, guys have a tendency to show their affection to each other by using sarcasm. And of course, then they try to do that with their wife or if they're in courtship with their girlfriend. And, and it doesn't go off, guys, just learn a lesson here. It doesn't go off very well with the women. Don't do it. I need to be very, very careful. And in, in the next session, I'm going to be talking about this joking and jesting that goes on between males and females. But just, ladies, don't get discouraged if you try to share something that's respectful with your husband and he tries to blow you off with sarcasm. It's a guy thing. He's really testing you to see whether or not you are sincere. And he's also wondering what your motives are for it, you know, because if you haven't been showing much respect and then you just come up with this statement about how you respect him about something, he's going to question it. He's going to wonder, you know, what is this about? You know, respect is our mother tongue. There's a true story about a man who worked at a train station and what his job was is he was a porter. And he was well known in this small community and he was well known amongst a lot of the clients that came and went on the trains. His job was to take the bags off the train and take it over to the people's cars or he would take it to the taxi. And he got to know a lot of the people there in the community and, and he was always cheerful and he was always friendly and smiling and he was always encouraging people. A lot of people loved him. The kids would come to the train station. They loved him and one of these kids found out that this man was going to have a birthday and so she had this idea since she liked this guy so much that she would go around and try to gather up out of the community some birthday gifts for him and so she went around and she came to his house before he got off work and she talked with the wife and there was a couple other kids with him and she had this cart it was like a basket with wheels that had gifts from all these people in the community and when he came in the door he walked in and it was his birthday he looked at it and he's like what's this and the girl started to explain about this was his birthday gift and he got mad and he says you think I can't provide for my own family that you have have to go out and get me a bunch of stuff. Look, I might not make that much money, but I can provide for my, my family. I don't need help. And she said, well, I, this is not from me. This is, this is from people in the community that they all chipped in together and gave all these gifts to you. And he goes, what? You went to the community and you started telling people that it was my birthday and they gave all this stuff. It's like a, a care package. Look, I don't need any kind of charity. I can work. I can take care of my family. I don't need this stuff. And the girl stopped him and said, I want to read to you a card that one of the ladies wrote. And he was like, Take this stuff back. I don't want to hear it. She said, please, let me read this card. And the card said, and it mentioned his name and said, I just wanted to share this gift with you because you've always brightened up my day. Every time I've gone to the train station, you're so friendly and so kind. I just want to let you know that I wanted to show a token of love for you, for the kindness and, and the cheerfulness that you've always shown me. And the guy kind of stood there for a second. And then he said, she said, I want to read a card from one of the men that had a really nice gift in the basket. And, and the, the card said, dear so-and-so, I just wanted to share this gift with you because I respect you. And I respect the fact that you are always a cheerful man and that you bring cheerfulness into the hearts and minds of those people that you come in contact with. And you take things long distances to people's cars and you are a bright spot in my life. And I just want to let you know that I respect you. And this man hearing this word, which was his mother language, by the way, the language of respect melted. And he started crying and he said, well, you know, they gave it to me for those reasons. I guess I could accept these gifts. You know, and here it was. It was, it was the whole thing of respect that changed everything because respect is man's mother tongue. And ladies, you need to learn to speak that language. And this is something in society that is so lacking in understanding how a wife can touch the heart of her husband. You know, there's a, a zillion books out there on marriage, and a lot of guys avoid them like the plague because a lot of these books are written from a feminist viewpoint. And they're always like dealing with the fact that the men are inadequate and that it's all the man's fault in the relationship and that if a man just learned to love better, the relationship would be healed. And men, a lot of ladies wonder why men run away from reading these books and why men run away from going to counseling when they're having marriage problems because they feel like they're going to get beat up. Why is there so many books dealing with this particular subject that are based from a women's standpoint? I'll tell you why. It's simple. It's called sales. These books sell. And who buys them? 
women generally buy them. And it's not until more recently I've seen books that are actually on the market that are fair and balanced. Fox News would just love it because it's fair and balanced reporting. It gives both sides of the story. Now, I wanna share with you ladies, how can a wife show respect to her husband? This is crucial. And we're gonna go through this in this session and the next session. But first of all, appreciate your husband's desire to work and achieve. Note, I said, desire, not performance. Men are extremely insecure about their performance. And we'll bring this out in some of the stats later. But you want to show the language of respect to your husband? Appreciate his desire to work and to achieve. Appreciate his desire to protect and provide. You know, a, a good-willed man, and that's what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about evil, sinister men. I'm talking about good-willed men who love their wives and love their kids. They have a desire to protect and provide for you. They'll even die for you. Also, appreciate his desire to be strong and to lead and to make decisions. You know, a lot of men are beaten down in the home. They feel like the, the kids push them down. They feel like the wife pushes them down. And they are demasculinized. And, and down inside, they know that God has made them to be the leader of the family, to be strong and to make decisions. And ladies, if you want your husband to respond, show appreciation for his desire to be strong and to lead, to make decisions. Also, appreciate his desire to analyze and counsel. You know, men are fixers. Even if they're not good at it, they want to try. They want to analyze. They want to counsel. And, you know, sometimes they give too much counsel to their wives, more than a wife would want. But just at least appreciate the fact that that is part of a man, that he wants to analyze. He wants to counsel. He wants to try to fix things. And appreciate his desire for shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder friendship. Now, I'm going to bring this out later in one of our sessions about shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder relationships. Uh, women really prefer face-to-face -face relationships. You know, like when you're recording, sitting at a small table together, eye-to-eye contact you know women thrive on that you know the the romantic type thing but you know men want more than anything the, the desire for shoulder to shoulder relationships with their spouse you know going out and doing things side by side and we'll talk about that later but appreciate the fact that really your husband wants you to be there in a shoulder to shoulder friendship with you and appreciate his desire for sexual intimacy I wish we could get into this more um, it's a sensitive subject but this is something that a lot of women just don't understand about men and that there is a desire built in men for sexual intimacy and a wife should not be afraid of that and she should show appreciation for that part of the relationship. Now let's talk about respect and abilities, you know, appreciating the desire to work and achieve. I found this really, really interesting, you know, like you turn to the book. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 it says and the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it now why did God put Adam in, in the garden of Eden and why did he create Adam for the purpose of dressing and keeping the garden right at the very beginning when man was created he was given the function of work in fact if two men meet each other for the first time what is the very first question one man will ask the other man? Do you know what it is? What do you do for work? Now, if two ladies meet each other for the first time, maybe at a fellowship meal or they're someplace at a social gathering, and one woman will come to the other woman, what will be the first question that one lady will ask another lady? It is about their husband, about children, about cooking food or food or shopping. You see, it's quite evident that Females have a tendency to be family-oriented, while the male has more of a tendency to be work-oriented. Now, we know there's a lot of women in the workplace, and their job is a really big part of them. But generally speaking, women tend towards family, men tend towards work. That is the way God made them. In Psalms 104, verse 23, it says, Man goeth forth unto his work and to, of his labors until the evening. So this shows that man was created for the very purpose of work and for labor. I like to refer to this as the instrumentality of man. It's really interesting when you live out in the country, you, you see things in children that you don't necessarily see in an inner city environment as much because when they come into the country, they can go outside and do different things. And I've noticed that uh, like little boys or even my son, when he was smaller, if a little boy goes out into the forest, you're camping or you live up in the forest or people come and visit us in the forest and the little boy goes outside, what is the first thing a little boy will do? He will bend over and do what? Pick up a stick. 
And then he'll either pretend it's a gun or a sword or a saw or a hammer or be hitting trees with it. It's the first thing that a little boy gravitates to because God has created something inside of men and boys to use tools, to have instruments in their hands, to work, to go do things. And, you know, like I have three daughters and I watch what they would do when they'd go outside. They'd made mud pies, you know. They'd find little dishes and cups and they'd mix water and mud together. They'd even put grasshoppers and ants in there. They'd be cooking and doing their girl things and the boys would be building forts or they'd be out playing like war games and chasing each other and hiding in the woods and stuff. You know, they did some research that was really interesting. They took a six-year-old girl and put her in a room that was completely empty and all there was was a mirror and behind the mirror was a video camera and they wanted to see what this little six-year-old girl would do. The first thing this little six-year-old girl did is she walked up to the mirror, looked at herself and started to talk to herself. Well, in the same room, they took a little six-year-old boy and they put him into the room, turned the video camera on. He walked into the room and he started talking to himself, looking all over. He went into the mirror, just glanced at himself and walked around the room. He was distracted by any noises outside and he just started making sounds and doing things. And you see, boys were wired to do something. It's not that the fact that boys are better than girls or girls are better than boys are just different, but there's something about little boys that are different than little girls. My son, when he was smaller, he'd get a stick, he'd get his dog, he'd dress up like, you know, like some kind of a um, Bible character, and he'd be out in the woods doing all kinds of stuff with tools and building stuff. It's just something God has put into boys. Now, the Bible has some pretty strong words about this whole thing about work. It says in 1 Timothy 5.8, it says, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house. He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Wow, strong words from the Bible about working. I want to uh, share with you one lady's insight about how many men think about themselves and their insecurities about being providers. Ask the question, regardless of how successful you are in your current job, how do you feel about yourself? Now, ladies, this is going to share a lot with you about what's going on inside of a man. 33% of men say, I always feel secure about my abilities. Now, this is a man who's successful in his job. 33% of the men say, I feel secure about my abilities. But 67% of the men say, I secretly feel insecure and I'm concerned about what others think about me or their opinions of me. 67% of the men who have successful jobs down inside secretly feel insecure about their performance and are concerned about what others think about this. This tells us that as strong and macho as a man may seem to be on the outside, many are insecure about their performance and what people think about them. In fact, when asked this question, if your wife made enough money to support the family, would you still feel a compulsion to work, or in other words, to provide? 78% of the men said, yes, I would still feel I should go out and provide, where only 22% said, no, I would not feel like I should have to provide. Maybe those 22% would be content just going golfing and knowing that the wife was the breadwinner. But this says that the majority of men feel something inside of them that they still needed to go out and work and do something. His desire to provide and his insecurity carries over into the home life. In a review uh, of one of the other sessions, I, you know, pointed out that a man can be asked if his wife loves him, and he'll say, sure. You know, the good relationship with his wife, he'll say, sure, my wife loves me. Ask the same man if his wife likes him, and he'll say, well, you know, I'm not too sure. The survey verifies this among men when asked this one question. In your home life, do you have thoughts like, I am not appreciated around here? And then they were allowed to choose between three different answers. And this was men in the prime time of their work life between the age 36 and 55. In your home life, do you have thoughts like, I'm not appreciated around here? Now, this ladies are going to tell you something about what men perceive, whether it be right or wrong. From your perspective, this is what most men perceive. 52% of the men said yes, frequently or sometimes they feel like they're not appreciated in their home. Another 25% said, no, I rarely have thoughts like that, but it still shows that once in a while they do have thoughts like that. And 23% of the men said, no, I generally feel respected. So this shows us that men down inside want to be appreciated for their abilities. You know, have you ever watched a situation where a guy gets a new DVD player and he's trying to figure out the menus on it and stuff, and the wife comes along and says, hey, why don't you let one of the kids figure that out? And, and the man's kind of offended, you know, and he's trying to he figure it out himself because you see, men thrive on a challenge. They want to prove themselves. They want to be able to figure things out for themselves and they don't want to feel insecure or inadequate. I remember 
One time, my wife and I uh, made a trip to Portland, Oregon. I was driving a car and we were going down this freeway and she was looking at the map and, and she's saying, hey, I think we need to take this next exit. And I said, are you sure? And the traffic was bad and, and it looked just like this picture right here. You know, it was a, a can of worms with freeways and roads going every different direction. And she said, turn on this one. And I turned on and I said, oh, this is the wrong road. And then I said, now what am I gonna do? So I turned on another road to try to get back to the freeway and we got lost and my wife says, why don't you just pull over and ask somebody? And you know what I said? No. Why is it that a guy, when he gets lost, will refuse to pull over to the side of the road and ask somebody for directions? I'll tell you why. Because a man wants the adventure of being able to figure it out himself. A man wants to prove to himself and his wife that he is capable. Now, some ladies say, that's just typical male ego. That's the problem. He's just getting in the way here. You know, but really what's going on inside of a man is much deeper than just proving, you know, to his wife that he can find the freeway. A man deep down inside is thinking this, if she does not trust me in something as small as finding my way along a road, why would she trust me in something as important as being a good provider or a good father? If she doesn't respect me in a small thing, she probably doesn't really respect me at all. You know, see, a wife needs to be a support to her husband. Being a support means helping relieve the pressure of her husband rather than adding to the pressure of her husband. Men try to show their love to their wives and their families by providing, and sometimes these become misplaced priorities. You know, a lot of times, like a lot of guys, you know, they're, they're working and working and working. They think that that's the way that they're showing their love to their family by working long hours and making more money. It's a misplaced priority, but this is the way that a guy thinks, you know, if I just provide more, that this will show that my wife, that I really love her and really, it's one of the men's, our, our weaknesses. And really what we need to understand, guys, is that what our families want more than anything is quality time for us. We don't have to prove ourselves and prove our manhood by having misplaced priorities, by working longer and longer hours or taking on more and more work. We need to set priorities in our families because that's our backsided weakness. Our strength is that we want to be providers, but our backsided weakness is that oftentimes we will have misplaced priorities. Our next session is gonna be part two of speaking the language of respect.